We'll start off with Travis Brown from Bryan College Station Eagle. I, I could be mistaken, and we could have already asked you about this, but if we did, might as well. Uh, are, are, do, do you fancy yourself as a running back now with some of those runs you had a couple weeks ago? And, and you know, what, what, what is that experience like for you? Uh, uh, experience was not expecting to run the ball. I uh, don't want to run the ball again. It was fun and all. I'm not going to lie, I blacked out. I definitely just took the ball and started running. It was, it was kind of funny, but obviously if I'm touching the ball, something went wrong. So that's kind of how I thought about it too. Yeah. And then uh, Kellen talking a little bit earlier about maybe if, if what, what this could be if this was his last game as an Aggie. What, what, has, uh, what do you and your perspective think that Kellen has meant to this program in his years here? Uh, I think he's been a great deal of the program. You know, uh, I think he definitely is going to leave an impact, definitely gonna leave a legacy here, which is awesome for him. Uh, I think Kellen just helped, and like all of us as seniors, the 2017 class, I think we've all helped build, hopefully, like maintaining like a championship program, something that like teams from now on will start following, like the ways we did everything, how it worked out, how we did the offseason, how we practiced, how we played games. And then finally, is there any is there any conversation amongst the seniors on the offensive line about anybody taking advantage of, of coming back next year? Or what's that kind of conversation like? Um, obviously, there's talks around the whole locker room about that. But right now, everyone's just focused on just winning this game, playing the best we can, Thanks. finish out the year strong. All right, next question is from Daryl Bruffett with KBTX and then Chuck. Hey, Carson, can you talk a little bit about uh, just that? I know North Carolina's got some guys that are opting out, but you guys haven't. You guys are uh, basically staying 100% strong. Just how proud you are of the guys that put the team first. Not saying that there's anything wrong with what the North Carolina guys are doing, but just the fact that you guys are, are putting the team first and wanting to finish up strong. Um, I don't know, the whole opt-out thing. Yeah, you know, everyone can make it what you want. Like, you know, I don't think anybody on our team is going to quit on our team like that. Uh, you know, like we've been battling it out. The whole 2020 season definitely got really close as a – as like a, just a team as a whole because there's been a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you know, you kind of got to give it up for everybody just sticking with each other, even like through the – like kind of the thickness and like kind of the rough times about, you know, two weeks off here and there. You know, you had COVID, people get quarantined. Everyone just knew that. They just want to keep playing. So, you know, I think it's one of those things, too, we owe to Texas A&M to play it out, you know. You know, uh, Coach Fisher might not have recruited me, but I owe a lot of someone just let me come here and let me play. And I owe a lot to A&M to finish out my part of the contract and play out all my games since they are providing, like, a scholarship and letting me play here. All right, next up is Chuck Carlton from the Dallas Morning News, and then Pranav. What has changed about the, the culture in the football program since Coach Fisher arrived, and, and especially this year? I guess, what's been the secret sauce for you guys? Uh, the secret sauce this year, I think it was just we had a lot of depth. Not, not depth, but like a lot of experience more just around the whole team. You know, the defense is like, a lot of seniors on it, a lot of people that know how to play football. This year, we finally had an O-line that had a lot of experience. You know, the biggest thing, like, we had a quarterback that had a lot of experience, and even the running back to Jalen, you know, and the tight ends, like Rennick, too. And the receivers, they were just wanting to wanting to play, wanting to make plays. So that helped, too. Uh, I think this year, we made a big emphasis, like, on the O-line, running the ball, being able to uh, pass protect, too, and give Kellen enough time to get to the skilled players to make plays. And what about the culture as a whole? I mean, what 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 has Coach Fisher and his staff brought to the table? Uh, since he's been here, you know, he brought in Coach Schmitty, the strength coach, and you know, he's a I, I love Schmitty. He's a great great dude. Uh, you know, it's like his program. He's gonna try to break guys and makes them fit into the program, and that's what he did from the beginning on. I could tell, like. You know, it was just a different way we did things with uh, the old staff and with him. You know, you had to be here early, had to be on time. You know, if you weren't early, then he's gonna, you're going to get kicked out. It's just one of those things. And everybody respected it, knowing that we were trying to change it. And so the culture as a whole got changed. We all knew, like, what it takes to be a winning program. 
and what it takes like, and what we have to do to get there and how we have to be able to stay there consistently throughout the week. And that means like practicing at a championship level, like, you know, practices become kind of uh, uh, like long and just demanding and stuff. But we every week we realize like it's very important that we are focused every day. All right, next is up is Pranav and then Justin. Carson, in terms of North Carolina's defensive line, do you have a general idea of how you're going to set up protections for the game on Saturday? Uh, it looks like they're going to do a lot of three down. Uh, they like to move a little bit. They're going to have four eyes. Some four eyes are stand-ups. Uh, Protection-wise, we're just going to keep it the same way. We always protect like three down fronts, four down fronts. Nothing really changes that way. Uh, yeah, North Carolina, like we've been watching them, like they're a pretty good D line, pretty good uh, defense as a whole. Yeah, I kind of like how they just hustle the ball. They're always high motor guys, which, you know, that's, that deserves, it deserves a lot of credit for those guys. Thanks, Carson. Next up is Justin Woodard from KAGS and then Mark Passwaters. Carson, obviously, you guys are disappointed in, in maybe getting over it as you get to practice this week in his game week, but. Orange Bowl is no slouch of a bowl, man. What, what what does it mean to play in this game, and what would it mean to win it? I mean, this program hadn't been to it since, I think, the early 1940s. So, this means something, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, this is just another game. Uh, we need to finish the season out strong. You know, the whole team knows this is a big game. Uh, you know, whatever the people voted on, it's the past. You can't really do anything about change it. All we can focus on is this game. Uh, I know everyone on the team is pumped to go to Miami. Like you said, we haven't been there in years and years, so – it's awesome that we can be one of those AM teams, the first ones to set like a, to set a standard about going to New Year's Six Bowls, about going to New Year's Six Bowls and playing our hardest, finishing out the season, and hopefully come back with a win. All right, let's go to Mark Passwaters and then Owen Buchanan. Carson, I'm going to ask a, a you know, 64 mile up question. Explain to people who don't know why offensive linemen like run blocking as opposed to pass blocking? Because you especially have mentioned how much you like run blocking this year. Uh, you know, I like – it's one of those things you – like, for me, I like getting a three-point stance and I like going at somebody. It's kind of – it's kind of like a board drill almost sometimes where it's just you versus him. You got to win your battle and your block. And I guess you can say the same thing with pass protecting. But uh, it feels – it's I'll say it's awesome when you get to move somebody, you get to throw somebody on the ground. And getting to move him like two or three yards back, knowing that you just overpowered that man. Um, you know, like run blocking. Also, I think it takes it's so to be able to run block, you got to trust not only the old lineman, but you got to trust the tight ends if we're in there with tight ends. You got to trust receivers to make blocks in the outside perimeter. You know, you just kind of got to trust the whole offense as a whole in order for Isaiah and I, any of the running backs, to chain to make that make that carry and make the yards. And then this year, it's also been awesome just getting to see Isaiah, you know, run through guys. Like, we'll block. He'll make contact at five yards, but then get an extra two or three or five. You know, and that's a big thing, too. It's just, like, for us as an old line, you can tell we just get really hyped up when we get to move move the ball, run the ball, and just move people around. You ever kind of get the feeling, or do you know at a certain point in time where the opponent's defensive front knows that they're in trouble? Uh, yes. And that's like the point that an O line, like you can feel them just breaking almost. Uh, you can feel them like have over, they're getting tired. And that's when we're just like begging the coaches, like, Hey, let's keep running at them. Like we're in, we're in better shape than them. Like we can keep doing it. And whenever you start seeing them start seven people out, like third, fourth quarter, long drive, like we're really good at doing those 10, 12, like plus play drives and just run the ball on the whole time. Like we're in shape and we also want to, throw people around and if you watch us some games like it'll be one of the last plays of the drive we just went 80 yards and people are still getting moved off the ball which is just it's awesome seeing uh, all of us how we've improved that way all right thanks all right we'll wrap it up with Owen B. Cannon from Texas. Yeah, a couple quick things for you Carson first of all do you guys have anything left to prove in this game yes sir obviously uh Again, every week, like you got your personal self to prove. You got, you know, you got your name in your back. You got Texas A&M. Uh, we just got to prove to everybody in the country that we are a top team. You know, we're going to be a top five team. We want to stay there. Uh, this game, especially, we need to prove that we belong. Like a New Year's Six Bowl, we belong in the top, like like contenders for the next years and years to come. 
And I think just finishing out strong, saying that we like we can make it a whole year just being focused and just playing. Okay, and then I wanted to ask you about, you know, uh, and just had a last week or whatever it was, a, a big day on signing day. Do you guys that are veteran guys been around, do you pay any attention to the uh, to the recruiting and the guys that are coming in and do y'all get excited about it? Or is it something that y'all don't even, hey, I'm not going to play with those guys, so I don't care? Uh, it's not like I don't care. It's just you hit a certain age and it's kind of like, all right. Like, like you know, I just don't even really know much about uh, – I just don't really know much about the recruiting and stuff like that. I heard that we did get a bunch of good old line guys pumped about that. Always good to have more better old line guys to push each other. Uh, honestly, the only guys that really care about recruiting is the guys from South Lake <laughs> yeah, from my hometown. Like if there's anybody good on my, like, hopefully we get them, keep the South Lake train coming here. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. We actually have one more ad. We'll go to Charlie Mickens to finish up. Good afternoon, Carson. Uh, you talked a minute ago about the uh, North Carolina uh, defensive line. When you look at them at the line or the defense as a whole, does it remind you of anybody you played against in the SEC? Um, no, not necessarily. Uh, I think these guys might not be the biggest guys we've seen, uh, but I think they do play really hard and they got a lot of grit to them. Uh, like I said, they run around, they hustle. They, they're good with their hands. They try to keep fighting the entire play. If that means they got beat, they're trying to hustle someone down from the backside. Uh, so I think they're different in that aspect where they're maybe not the biggest people, but they, I kind of, I respect them how they play. You know, they play hard. They play just tough. So it's going to be a good game. Thank you. All right. And that's all the questions we have for you, Carson. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank and you. Thank you all.